This is a model of the oral cavity, nasal cavity, and pharynx created by Rachel Daniel and Tiffany Smith for the class Anatomy and Physiology for Speech and Hearing. The oral cavity, nasal cavity, and pharynx are part of the anatomy of articulation and resonation. The articulatory system is the process of bringing mobile and immobile articulators together for the purpose of forming speech sounds. The vocal tract can be thought of as a series of linked tubes. It is comprised of the oral cavity, the nasal cavity, and the pharynx. The oral cavity is the cavity that undergoes the most change during speech, therefore making it the most significant cavity to the speech mechanism. It extends from the oral opening to the fascial pillars. The oral opening is also referred to as the mouth and is very involved in articulation. The mouth is the point where sound exits orally. Among the oral cavity, there are 10 speech articulators, 7 mobile, and 3 immobile. The 7 mobile articulators include the tongue, mandible, velum, lips, cheeks, pharynx, and larynx, and hyoid bone. The 3 immobile articulators include the alveolar ridge, hard palate, and teeth. The roof of your mouth consists of the hard palate and the soft palate. The hard palate is the separator for the oral cavity and the nasal cavity and it serves as an immovable point of contact for articulation. The ridges that run laterally across the hard palate are the ruga. These ridges serve as a landmark for articulation. The hard palate is divided in half by the medium raphe. The velum or soft palate is an extension to the hard palate. It is a movable muscle mass that separates the oral and nasal cavities. The velum is used to do is used to differentiate nasal sounds from non-nasal sounds. The anterior and posterior fascial pillars lie on either side of the velum and mark the posterior margin of the oral cavity. In between these tissues lie the palatine tonsils. These are masses of lymphoid tissue and are situated on either side of the pillars. The shape and size of the oral cavity differs due to it being altered through movements of the tongue and mandible. The mandible is the massive unpaired bone that makes up the lower jaw of the face, and the maxilla is the paired bones that make up the upper jaw. The maxilla bones also make up most of the hard palate, nose, and upper dental ridge. The tongue is a massive structure that occupies the floor of the mouth. It is primarily responsible for movement of food within the oral cavity to position it for chewing and to propel it backward for swallowing. The muscles involved in the tongue include the superior longitudinal, inferior, transverse, and vertical muscles. The pharynx is broken into three regions, the oropharynx, the oryngopharynx, and the nasopharynx. It is the most posterior of the tubes. The oropharynx is the portion of the pharynx posterior to the fauces and is bounded above the velum. The lower boundary of the oropharynx is the hyoid bone. The hyoid bone is, al is also the upper boundary of the laryngopharynx. The laryngopharynx is bounded by the epiglottis and esophagus. The nasopharynx is a space above the soft palate. The lateral nasopharyngeal wall contains the orifice of the auditory tube. Also within the nasopharynx are the adenoids, which is a massive lymphoid tissue found at the base of the posterior nasopharynx. The nasal cavities are produced by the paired maxillae, palatine, and nasal bones. They are divided by the nasal septum. The nasal cavities are covered in a mucous membrane and dealt with beating and secreting epithelia and a rich vascular supply. These two things combined humidifies the air as it enters the passageway. The nostrils mark the anterior boundaries of the nasal cavities. The floor of the nasal cavity is the hard palate of the oral cavity. This concludes our presentation of the oral cavity, nasal cavity, and pharynx.